Good morning and welcome to Mystical Teachings from the Tanya, Rabbi Rabbi Point, coming to you from Chabad Zech and Kedushim. In Montreal, Canada, it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We say good morning to Miriam in Hayden, Colorado. Welcome. Benjamin is with us from Columbus, Ohio. Good morning. Rina, good talk to you, also in Colorado. Allison, shalom. Erica in Norway, where Shabbos is coming. Luciana, to remind me, forgot. Stan, good afternoon to you in London, England, where also Shabbos is coming. Boker Tov to Frima in Montreal, welcome. Rick is with us, all right, from Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's good, oh, it's been a while, Rick. I was thinking, actually, glad to see that you're with us. Uh, I was thinking where you were recently. Welcome. Karen in Ohio. Good job is Tim in Texas. Boker Tov. Art is with us in Michigan. Oh, welcome back also, Art. Priscilla. Uh, in Buenos Aires. Yeah, remind me from where. Robert in Boston. Welcome. Michelle uh, from. Good morning. Mark in Santa Rosa. Boker Tov. Where it's pretty early there. Quite early. Uh, who else? Eugenia is with us in Calgary. Good morning. Lisa, go good morning. Eleanor in, good afternoon, in the Netherlands, if I recall correctly. Remind me. Paula, shalom. Um, who else? David and Batya in Montreal. And Michael, we'll get to talk to you in Alexandria, Virginia. Alexandria, Virginia, that is. Okay, a moment here. Let's uh, do do do. All right. Who else? John, North Carolina. Anna in Hungary. Beautiful. All right, folks. We begin chapter 36. Of course, continuation of what we learned previously. And... Um, we need to understand ultimately what is the purpose of the Bainini. The righteous person we know, very few righteous people though, that have been able to transform their heart, all layers of the heart, urges, negativity in the heart that we have, to transform it. The righteous have done it. The Bainini and us, Bainini in training, BITs. They haven't been able to do it. But what we learned in the previous chapter, what we can do is in the moment of doing a mitzvah, we transform then our animal soul and body. As I called it the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you recall. Right? We're able to transform that in the moment that we create a light of God that encompasses us through the, the, the act of the mitzvah in that moment. Okay, but why is that so important? Why is it so important? So you, you didn't, you know, you know, did an action that had maybe no intention or very little intention, heartfelt. It's just the very act of giving charity, the very act of putting on your tefillin or lighting Shabbos candles, whatever it is. Minimal, a bit, you know, it's a, 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 just an action. Why is that so important? This we're going to come up today with, wow, an amazing um, idea, positive, uh, amazing thought. So think for a moment. If you're thinking about your purpose or the purpose of creation, 
who would you naturally like how would your head be positioned for example you be looking down like this you know thinking very you know when you kind of like pick up your head <laughs> looking upwards heavenly for some inspiration or whatever the case may be right We're probably thinking upwards, not downwards. That's first of all. Second question. Is there an ultimate purpose? Or are there many purposes? How do we say that there's an ultimate purpose? How do we understand that? As a matter of fact, in mystical teachings, in Kabbalah, in different places, Jewish teachings, it brings different purposes. Like, God is kind, and God wishes to bestow kindness upon us. And therefore, ultimately, what we should do is bestow kindness too. That's the ultimate purpose, kindness. That's right, to bestow kindness. Or that God wants to be known. To be known, connected. Those are purposes. Those are amazing purposes. But as the teachings from the Alter Rebbe, uh, as the Alter Rebbe says, not here, but in other places, that kindness and to connect and to be known are not a reason to create this physical world. You could have kindness and, be con and create connection and to be known in the world of the spirit. In the spiritual worlds so it doesn't answer why this physical world is a world that is a world that god creates what for i mean think about it the world of the spirit is a much loftier world so the author of quotes from our sages a well-known statement that the purpose of the world was created in order that God himself, the essence of God, he desired to have an abode, a home, in this lower realm. That's the ultimate purpose. In this lower realm is where God wants to be at home. Now, first question is, what do you mean lower? Lower means that there's a higher means the higher he doesn't want, the lower he does want. Well, and again, intuitively, we would think that what God wants is the higher world uh, than the lower world. That's, you know, that's why I asked you, you know, if you're thinking about ultimate purpose, are you putting your head down or are you putting your head up? <laughs> Heavenward. Um, that's what you would think. So first of all, we need to understand what does it mean lower and higher? Before God, there's such a thing, lower and higher. God's removed from anything lower and higher. Those are human terms. Before God created the world, what was there? Only but God. Well, after he creates the world, there's still only one reality, and that's God. All right. So what does it mean, lower and higher? That means only from our perspective, there's such a thing as lower and higher. From God's perspective, there's only but him. And Oid Milvadi. But from our perspective, us as a recipient, yes, there's a concept of lower and higher. Well, what is that? Higher means that the contraction on the divine light is not so much. In other words, the world of spirit, where there's souls, angels, the light isn't so reduced, and therefore they are seeing the light. But then God contracts on the light on his divine light to such a degree, to such a degree that it culminates in a physical world that is, in a way, gross. Gross, uh, I don't know if that's a good word. Yeah, it's a, that's a proper word. What it means is that it's such a dark world that we might think that in the dark we in the darkness we're seeing the light right in other words in the world of spirit the souls in Ghanedin in the higher in the higher worlds 
they perceive the light. They know that there's a great light, a light that's beyond them that they want to connect to, they want to cleave and be attached to. And they recognize. But this world is so gross, and what makes it gross is that it's so dark and doubly dark that we can be sitting in the darkness and feel that we're in the light. In other words, we can be living such a lie and we are thinking we're living the truth. <laughs> right? Why? is because this world is filled with such klipa, such a shell that covers over on the divine truth that we don't perceive anything but my truth. Why? Because I feel so separate, so separate from God that I can only sense me, myself and I, because that's the nature of this physical world. That's not the nature of the spiritual world, and that's why it's called a higher world relative to us. That's a higher world where they do sense that there's something greater than them and that they've got attached themselves to. But here in this world, no, we feel removed. We feel even alone. We feel disconnected. Well, at least I feel me. Right? So what was the whole purpose of that? Why would God do that? Is because in this darkness is where we can transform it and to really bring the light of God into this world through our achievement of what's called in skafia bishacha to bend myself, to transform myself. And therefore there's a greater light that emerges. That's a much greater light that is even in the higher worlds and the spiritual worlds. That the souls there in Gan Eden and the souls in um, are basking in that great light, that here we produce a much greater light of the very essence of God that will dwell as a result of what? How? By subjugating the negative force of this world, that darkness of this world, and being able to transform it into a divine light that we bring into this world. Now, whoa, for bringing this divine light that's even a greater light than is uh, a divine light that is in the higher worlds then isn't i'm not, not going to dissolve from this is that the light of god going to be too great too vast so with that god gives us a power the power of torah that give as it's called oiz torah is called strength it gives us the strength that we can maintain contain and not be dissolved by the infinite light of God. Now, truth be said, when is that infinite light of God going to be revealed to us? It's not today. We don't experience it today. That will be the culmination of everything that we do now, and the ultimate purpose um, and fulfillment of creation will be in the times of Mashiach, which is what the world was purposely created for. In other words, Mashiach is not a reward. It is, as we'll learn more about that, the ultimate um, culmination of everything that we have achieved. Meaning, we've taken this world that is a double darkness, where when we sit in the dark, we feel that we're in the light, right? We're illuminated lives that we have, when in fact it's not that way. Only when we can take that human condition and subjugate it, not allow it to dictate my reality, but subjugate it um, in the act of doing a mitzvah, that then I transform myself and I transform, transform the negative forces of this world and bring a divine light that this world has hitherto not seen or had. Now, what that means and how that plays out and the experience of that is really in the next class, we'll have more of that. But the point over here, the, the you know, the take home over here, which is crucial, crucial take home over, over here is that when we speak about purpose, the ultimate purpose is in this is in this physical world, in a physical action that we do in this world, not in the world of spirit, again, which is counterintuitive. 
we would think that the world of spirit, in other words, you know, the kindness and the attachments that we make, that's where it's at. But if it was about being kind, God's kindness, that we need to be kind, or if it's about God's attachment and our attachments that we need to make and our connection we need to make, then you don't need to make a physical world. You can have a world of spirit. And in the world of spirit, you can have acts of kindness. In the world of spirit, in the spiritual worlds, you can have acts of attachments or, or you know, bonding and attachments. What do you need a physical world for? Do you need a physical world to engage in the physicality of this world? Because the physicality of this world is such a dark place as opposed to the world of the spirit or a spiritual world, which is a higher world where the light of God is not so diminished and therefore we feel the attachment, we sense the kindness that comes from our divine source. But here we don't. We don't feel the God's kindness. We don't feel God's attachment. And therefore we feel ourselves and disattached and you know it's an arduous task to to get there so why does he want this physical world then it's through it this that the light of god is so removed that we feel our own i feel myself me myself and i that you know i'm the center of the universe and what do i need to do subjugate that i need to be able to come to a place where I can subdue that human condition and be able to, you know what? Attach myself through the act of a divine will of God to do that which he needs of me, a mitzvah, in the physical. And through that, I'm fulfilling the ultimate purpose. Now, as I mentioned, you know, that, 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 that's a very mindful and very... Um, unbelievable idea, but how do we experience that? Can we experience that? Did we experience that? So that we're going to have to uh, wait for the next class to have a little more understanding and appreciation of that. In the meantime, any questions, any comments? I know now that. I know now that. Can you please share with me, folks? Right. John, know that the creator of the universe desires to have a home for himself in this lower world, so it is left for us to bring divine light to the lowest part of Klippa by engaging the animal soul with mitzvahs. And that is our purpose. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else to please share? Any questions? Any comments? And uh, in, uh, in Hungary, I know now that the purpose of the Bainini and training is to subjugate the bad forces of through doing a mitzvah and the aim of bringing divine light in the physical dark place. Excellent. Um, Marjan says, I need to listen to this again in order to comprehend it. Do you have a question that's not clear, Marjan, so I could perhaps go over it again to bring more clarity? And please say hi to Kayla and to Mushki, two daughters of mine that she works with. Uh, David, I know now that our job here is to subjugate the negative forces of this world by doing a physical mitzvah and bringing a godly light into this world. Very good. Thank you. Lee is with us in Dallas, Texas. Virginia, I know now that the purpose of creation of the physical world is making a dwelling place for God and that is achieved through our physical actions. By subjugation of the animalistic nature, we subjugate Klippa and divine light of physical reality. Virginia, Calgary, excellent. How's the snow there? Lots of snow. Okay, folks. Beautiful. Any other uh, questions or comments? Please share. All right, one.
wonderful. We welcome Bear and Barrow and uh, everybody else. All right, folks. Uh, Shabbos is coming. Have a wonderful preparation for Shabbos. And um, reminder, 12 noon, we continue our conversation and learning. Um, please join me. Rabbi Ronnie Klein coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya.